Hi, good morning Puffle. My name is Galina Gomez. I'm your invigilator for the OET speaking session on the 17th of March 2020. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name for the record, please? My full name is Pavel Smith. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is 2548321. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a nurse. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. How do you practice self-care? After every shift, I try to spend some quality time with my family. Thus I balance my personal life and professional life successfully. Then, I do exercise to maintain health and also manage hobbies so that I can get my mind off work. I also like traveling and going on road trips to rejuvenate when I have enough time. For instance, I went on a two-week vacation in Australia last year. The change of scenery allows me to get back to work with more zeal. Thus I am a family man and manage my professional side as well. How would you handle a disease outbreak? At the onset of a disease outbreak, I will take measures to ensure that patients and medical staff are safe. I will begin by placing patients with symptoms of the disease in quarantine and restricting access only to healthcare providers with the appropriate PP. From there, I will initiate a search for all the medical staff and other persons who may have come in contact with the infected patients for testing and quarantine to prevent the spread of the disease. I also make sure my family and loved ones are safe and provide the necessary information to keep themselves safe. Is there any situation where patient care was considerably different because of your intervention? Once during the surgery, I noticed a change in the patient's vitals. Timely informing the patient's change in condition to the surgeon allowed the surgeon to realize the patient was hemorrhaging blood. Thus address the issue before patching up the patient. If it were not for my intervention, there may have been needing another surgery. How well do you work as part of a team? Being a nurse? Teamwork is very essential and I would say it is vital. Once, I had a patient approach me and said he was waiting for his medication. I checked with his primary nurse to ask about the medication instead of providing it myself. Then, his nurse explained to me that he had Alzheimer's and already had his medication. Thus, our communication helped our team ensure the patient's safety. What makes you the best person for the nursing role? As a nurse, I have the compassion and commitment to care for the patients. I work well under pressure and can manage different situations without stress. My adaptability and cooperative mindset make me a good team player. It's my punctuality and sincerity which make the administration provide me with the responsible duties. Beyond these, my academic and practical knowledge gives me the confidence to take up and handle all the situations coming across my nursing career. Thus. I can say I am the best person for the nursing role. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you.
Your preparation time is over. You can now start your roleplay. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Hello, good morning. I am Pavel Smith, one of the nurses in the emergency department. How may I address you? Hi, good morning. My name is Galina Gomez. Galina, I am here to inform you that your son is alright. Oh, that's good to hear. Now, you can go home. Alright. Well, Galina, can I have a moment please? Sure, you may please. I have noticed that you were feeding your son some grapes without crushing. Yes, he feels hungry. So I thought of giving him some grapes. Your thoughts are really appreciable. However, giving grapes without crushing may cause choking. But nurse, it's soft and fresh grapes. And it's easy to chew and swallow. Galina, your thoughts are sensible. Even though the grapes are soft. Being in round shape, it is highly probable to get choked by the children of your son's age. Oh, really? I thought grapes are soft and not hard like peanuts, so my son will be able to chew and have them safely. Try not to get confused. I would like to inform you about the choking hazard possessed by certain types of food. That sounds great. I would like to hear more. Happy to see your acceptance to listen. Galina, children under 5 years old may choke on certain types of food. Okay. But, can you please explain, which are those foods? Mainly, those ones which are small round food, and small hard foods. Because, these objects have a high probability of being stuck in their throat, and it will not allow oxygen to reach the brain. Oh, I see. But nurse, I have given my son grapes, many times in the past, without any problems. You might be right. Perhaps, it is a dangerous act. Your child may not choke all the time it is given. But, it comes under the foods which are at highest risk of choking, and children under 5 years old, should not eat them as such. I am surprised that even soft food like grapes can be a choking hazard. Whether it is soft or hard, doesn't determine it is safe for children under 5 years old. There are several other parameters as well. For example, grapes are soft and easy to have, but accidentally, if the child swallows them, grapes won't melt or pass through. Okay. Now I am realizing your point. Great. Hence, it will get stuck and cause choking in children. Now I totally understand that. That's great. Nurse, please advise me on the types of food that I should avoid giving my son. I will provide some examples for more clarification. Some of the foods like hard, gooey, or sticky candy, peanuts, nuts, and seeds, whole grapes, marshmallows, chunks of peanut butter, popcorn, chewing gum and so on. Alright. I understand. What I usually advise mothers to do is, either you provide them in a paste format, or else, think about whether the child can easily chew and make the piece of food you are giving into a paste. Oh, okay. Thus, the foods won't make the child choke. You gave me great insight. It's my pleasure. Also, I would like to highlight the danger of choking. All right. You may please proceed. Thank you. Well, a child chokes when something gets stuck in the throat. Specifically, the trachea, also known as the windpipe, which allows the passage of air. If food is stuck in the trachea, or the windpipe, it results in swelling trachea, thus causing the inability to speak. In severe cases, it can even cause death. I follow what you have conveyed. All right. Thank you for your understanding. May I know, if you have any more concerns please? Nothing nurse. Your explanations were very helpful, and I understand them easily. Good to hear. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, nurse. Now I will make necessary arrangements for your son's discharge. Thank you. You are very welcome. That is the end of your OIT speaking roleplay. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.